Well, for a lot of people, rent is due tomorrow, certainly a time that can be stressful even outside of a pandemic. And if you've lost your main source of income due to COVID-19, the stress is compounded. The Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit is supposed to help if you've lost your job, but is it enough? Daryl King is with community activist group ACORN. He's in Nova Scotia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Vanessa. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. So, Daryl Acorn recently did a survey around rent in Canada during the COVID-19 crisis. What were some of the findings there? Well, uh, Vanessa, they just came out uh, yesterday, and the, and the statistics will uh, tell you a lot for your listeners. Um, 70 percent, uh, well, actually, it was 1,100 respondents who took place in the survey, and all of those were low to moderate uh, low, were on low to moderate incomes. And uh, the first one, uh, 70% uh, felt that uh, were feeling financial impact by the COVID-19 uh, as, as pandemic. Uh, 42% of the respondents uh, don't qualify for the CERB and or EI and are presently falling through the cracks uh, of that uh uh, of that system of the CERB, uh, either due to a uh, lack of uh, eligibility criteria, uh, not meeting the eligibility criteria. Um, 75% do feel slightly to extremely uh, worried about paying rent by May 1st. Um, 35% don't feel they have enough uh, rent to pay by the deadline of uh, May 1st. And 15% to say they're already have been served for the eviction notice and are threatened with eviction once this ban is uh, is lifted. So uh, these are the concerns our, our tenants, our low-income tenants and uh, workers are, are facing right now as a result of this pen, uh, pandemic. So 1,100 respondents, uh, Daryl, were those across Canada? Yes. Wow. And when we're looking at that 42% that doesn't fit within the CERB, that, that hasn't been, um, hasn't had access to that, uh, do you under, have an understanding of, of how these folks are falling through those cracks? Well, I can, I can give you a couple personal, uh, personal uh, stories of, uh, of how people who uh, might be, uh, been falling through the cracks, uh, I mean, or, or who are even in addition of receiving the CERB, and still it's, it's not enough. There's uh, like in Halifax, one of our ACORN members uh, was uh, rent raised by 35% just uh, before this pandemic started. Uh, like most uh, most uh, uh, of our situ- most situations got just laid off uh, before that, uh, and uh, had to stretch the CERB benefit. But uh, with that big hike in, in his rent, uh, find it even in, in her finds it even harder to, uh, to, to keep up to date with all the uh, other bills. Then there was uh, another situation in Cape Breton, a single mother who just got laid off during the pandemic. Uh, she got the CERB, uh, but after rent and uh, insulin, uh, she's left with less than $100 to, to feed herself and her child, her young daughter. And the landlord is offered uh, no leasingcy on the rent at all. So a couple of examples of even with the CERB of how people uh, are, are, are finding it hard now to uh, to get by. So even with the CERB, for some folks, it's just even, not enough. Even, even with the CERB, Vanessa, yes. Um, and like you said, we're, 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 we have a lot of uh, demands and uh, come, four demands we're trying to get across. Uh, one is the rent freeze. Uh, that, that would be no rent increases uh, during the state of uh, emergency and, and six months after that. Um an example, homeowners here have been offered deferrals on mortgages uh, through various institutions that they deal with. Uh, I feel, we feel that if there's a break with them on mortgages, uh, tenants, uh, low to mod- uh, moderate income tenants, uh, workers, uh, should be included in, in the same category and, and provide some sort of rent relief and, and assistance uh, as well. Have you as seen... Well as it comes- Sorry? Sorry, I just wanted to ask, have you seen landlords actually try raising the rent at this time? Um, not personally myself, but these are these are these are the uh, situations that are occurring right out, out out there on a daily basis, Vanessa. Hmm. Right, 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 right across the the spectrum. And uh, and, and like I said, uh, we're, we're these are the demands we're asking for, and uh, as well as the total eviction ban. Now, in particular here in Nova Scotia, the McNeil government some time ago uh, said there would be no evictions 
up until July 1st. But beyond that, there's no guarantee that tenants would not have a face Face to, uh, have a fear to face of retroactive payments for non-payment, uh, non-payments or mispayments, as well as could still be faced with evictions. Um, right now, there's uh, right now there's the financial hardship they're facing, we're facing, and uh, and the mental hardship as well in terms of where to come up with the, uh, the money for the rent. I mean, people have choices to make: do we have rent, pay rent, or sacrifice the necessities of life, food, utilities, and and prescriptions for those who have medical conditions. I mean, where do you draw the line? What are you and, hearing from like people said, about the stress, the kind of stress that they're under? Yep, a lot of stress out there, and governments just uh, don't take into account how much stress the average uh, person is uh, is going through um, prior to the pandemic, but even so with the pandemic. And, you know, we're advocating equality and fairness for all, Vanessa, um, federal government, yes, has, uh, came through with some assistance for the CERB and expanded the CERB to include various uh, groups in society. But for those who are, are, are low to moderate incomes and uh, are on EI prior to COVID and such forth, I mean, that's a segment, you know, that it's still being neglected. I mean, just to treat everybody the same, you know, it's, it, we're living in difficult times, you know, uncertain times, um, but we'll get through that. But we need to look after the segment of the population that are, are vulnerable. And that's why we're proposing through these demands, um, through the report, and I'll finish the other two that I didn't get to in a second, that through these demands that some of these uh, concerns can be addressed and some of these uh, stresses taken off the, the burdens off the shoulders of the, the tenants uh, here who are low to moderate income workers. And, uh, Daryl, we're going to run right, right out of time in, in mere moments. Sorry. Where can I point people for more information? For more, oh, sorry, for more information, yes. Uh, national website, acorncanada.org. All right. Listen, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. And for your listening viewers out there, uh, stay safe, stay well. Okay. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. That's Daryl King. He's with Acorn, and he joined us from his home in Nova Scotia.